everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and in this featured product video, we're gonna be checking out a couple of inserts for Nemesis. Now, if you haven't seen anything about this game in the past, if you are a solo player, you are definitely gonna to want to check out Nemesis, and I've got multiple showcases here on the channel that will show you not only the released content, I believe we did two full showcases on the release content to date, plus a Kickstarter preview for the upcoming Nemesis lockdown content as well. I'll have links to those in the video as well as some popping up in the top right hand corner for you guys to be able to go check out if you want to see gameplay. But this video is going to focus on how we take everything I've got jammed in this core box and we look at a brand new insert that I've got here. And this, my friends, is the insert specific to the Nemesis Core game. We're going to be going through step by step of how to put this entire insert together. And then you're going to see my current storage solution around Nemesis. And then how that very much changes when placed inside of this insert, which requires absolutely no glue. Once we get through creating the core box insert and getting everything inside of it, we're then going to move to the stretch goal box for Aftermath and Void Seeders. These are the stretch goals that came from the Nemesis Kickstarters, and there's a UV printed insert specifically for those as well. When we're all said and done, I'm really looking forward to seeing what this is going to do in terms of setup and teardown timeframes, as well as just general organization of the game itself. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm really excited to check out this insert. I've been looking for a good solution for Nemesis as everything that's currently inside the boxes is very tight and jammed in. I also like to do some sleeving and I have colored sleeves even for some of the characters and things like that. You'll see how I actually keep all that stuff stored later on, but this insert I'm hoping solves all my problems around needing multiple boxes to keep things stored. So let's go ahead and open this insert up and see what it looks like from the inside, of course. I'm going to be going through this piece by piece. The first thing, of course, you'll run into is a full breakdown on how to build this thing. You're going to see the pieces built in a sped up fashion, so you don't have to watch the entirety of the build, but you can see already the UV printing coming right through. Let's check out each and every punch board that comes inside the box. The one instruction sheet that comes inside the box has everything you need in order to put this thing together. And I highly recommend only punching out what you're building rather than punching everything out and then being completely lost as to what was in each slot. So what I mean by that is you've got a double-sided instruction manual here. This side's gonna tell you what every single individual piece that you have across all the punch boards is labeled as, whether it's a letter for one of the giant base pieces or a number and a letter for one of the smaller pieces that interlock on top. And when you, one once you know this, this is your reference guide as to where to find those pieces to pull them out, but this is your build guide. So you can literally start with A, for instance, which I've done here by pulling out the matching one, and you're going to go ahead and find 1A, 2A, 3A, and 4A, and you simply just flip it over to the opposite side to figure out which punch boards it comes from, and you can see just by scanning through this, 1, 2, 3, and 4 are all in a clump in the middle there. So as an example here, I have the base A, and I know I can just look at the slots to actually determine which base this one's referring to, or use the other side of the sheet to figure that out. And then I've gone ahead and pulled each piece. I put them on the sides that I need to punch them in as, and then you simply start constructing it. 
Now, the one thing to keep in mind is anytime you have a piece that has one of these ends that looks like something would slot down into it, make sure you put those pieces in first because, of course, once you put the one on this side in and the one on the opposite side over here in, you're going to need to be able to have those in place for these ones to actually slide into position. And just like this, it's literally this quick to build each and every piece of this insert because, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there is no glue whatsoever and it's rock solid. I absolutely love the fact that the bases of each of these have all the instructions as to what goes where. That is fantastic. Makes things really easy after you've played the game and you want to put it back. It makes it so much faster. You'll also notice that the numbers that correspond to the base, which is B in this case, which is this one right here, are all going to have a B at the end of them so that you remember which ones go with which base. So you could potentially punch this all out in advance as long as you make sure to keep the pieces with the base they associate with and then work from there. I've gone ahead and collected the 12 B pieces that I needed. It might be tough to see them because they're black. They're going to blend in with the background, but there's one here. So 1B, 2B, 3B, 4B, all the way down left to right to the very bottom, which is 12B with some of the UV print going on. So the one thing to note is I'm going to assemble this right now so you'll see the completed product at the end going forward to each other base I need to create, which would be C, D, and E. I'm just going to show you the end result of them, and then we're going to dive into looking at my current storage solution around the base base game for Nemesis, seeing what I've got going on so far, and then I'll show you how we populate this entire insert, and you'll be able to see the comparison as to what I had prior to what I now have. I kid you not, this literally took me under a minute to assemble. It was super fast. I slotted in everything and I even did it in order from 1 all the way to 12. And it puts everything into the slots exactly the way you'd want them to work. So you don't have to work around it, which is perfect. And as you can see here, I now have a full tray that allows storage for dice, adult intruders. We've got creepers, breeders, colored rings, engine tokens, all kinds of stuff, escape pods and everything. So this is absolutely awesome. I really looking forward to filling this thing. Next up is base C. So I've got that one right here. I've got all the parts, 1C through to 10C, all listed out right here. Let's go ahead and assemble it, take a look. Here's a look at the finished product for this one here. Again, you've got all of your reminders inside of what goes in each of them. And again, UV printing all the way around the outside. Now, one correction around interpreting the actual instructions here is that anything that's really dark in terms of font is going to be pointed at what exactly needs to be slotted in each of these bases, but you'll see there is some carryover on this page in terms of some of these sheets, which also come inside the insert, and it's at this point when we grab base D, we're going to need to start referencing these types of ones, which will be coming from this pile. And we're all squared away to go ahead and begin assembling base D. It's worth mentioning that pieces just like this have some protective film on both sides. You're going to have to peel them off and make sure to do it from both sides. One thing I want to mention is that when I scrapped all the pieces for this base D that I'm putting together, there were actually four 2D pieces and I only grabbed two in the prior shot. So just letting you know, sometimes there'll be two or sometimes even four of a certain piece. Make sure to grab them all. Here's a look at base D, fully completed, UV printing all around the outside. You got that clear look on the inside for the dividers, looking really, really good. And the other thing to note is there's actually lids for a majority of these. I've even gone through already. You'll see there's a uh, space there, and you'll see there are hooks on the sides right here. And there's one over here as well. And basically, the cover will go right on top and slide across and then lock into the back here and then lock on this nub right here at the end to give you a fully protected case. So at the end of this, when you're pulling things in and out of the box, and of course, if you're vertically storing this, things aren't gonna go flying everywhere. And now it's time to put together the biggest base of this entire insert, and that is E. Now, I'm partway through completing this organizer, at least this last base, and the one thing I noticed when I pulled out all the parts for base E is right here where it states 9E, and there's three of them. I couldn't find it anywhere on the instructions where those actually reside, but I ended up realizing just by uh, elimination as I went through and grabbed all the parts that the only three that were not selected uh, to be used prior were these ones right here for 9D. So those are the three that I 
believe are supposed to be right here. So I've gone ahead and slotted those in. As I just mentioned, those nine Ds were in fact the nine Es. The only thing I didn't do correctly was I didn't have them in the right way. I had to actually take them out and spin them around. So you can see that everything lines up. And then this piece right here is gonna go straight through the middle. Everything regarding this base instructions are bang on, except for the fact, like I said before, these are gonna be labeled as 9D. In the version, at least, or printing that I have, they should be 9E. And here is a look at the very last base, obviously the biggest one to complete. You can see here it's got a whole bunch of areas for all the miniatures all labeled out so you'll know exactly what to place in each of them. You've also got labels for all the dividers for the cards along the side here. And there is some leeway in terms of you wanting to change positions of things, but I followed the instructions for the most part. I found that some of the dividers in terms of spacing, if you're to count, are not exactly bang on. So just do your best, go with your gut, or use this reference uh, in terms of the video to actually know where things should go. But again, realize there's a little bit of freedom in play there. However, there may not be so much freedom in play around the ones that have dividers within certain sections. So this is what you're looking at in terms of a final product build once everything has been put together. Now what we're gonna do is take a look at my current Nemesis storage solution, which I can tell you is kind of creative, at least I like to think so anyway. And then we're gonna go ahead and try and, and fill this insert with everything that I have in order to see whether this insert does a better job than my current situation. Now my current storage solution really just doesn't accommodate cards at all because based on the core insert that comes with the game, it's enough to be able to handle the majority of what I wanna store, but not exactly in the way in which I want to store it, if that makes any sense. So we've got the rule book here, we got reference sheets, we've got the game board, everything you can come to expect in terms of spacing there to allow you to place those in the box. But the insert in here is pretty good because it does give sectioned off areas to put things, although those things, those things don't always stay put. As I store this thing vertical, things start to slide around inside of it. But it does a pretty good job overall. But you see, I do have some random things kind of in different areas that don't necessarily fit perfectly. And if we go beyond this first area right here and into the second area, you'll see I've got a very interesting storage solution going on here with the expansion for the doors and the escape pods and the eggs and everything else kind of jammed in the back here in a real messy like formation in baggies. Uh, not, I mean, it makes use of what we have with the original core insert, but it's not exactly the best. So in that last shot, the last insert at the bottom of the core box, you notice that the cards were nowhere to be seen at all. So where are they? Well, they're inside this terrain expansion box. And ever since Lord of Hellas and onwards, I've been doing this trick with every single Kickstarter that's come with Awakened Realms. Whenever this size of a box, which is literally perfectly made for cards, would come for terrain, I would just take the terrain out, put it in the space where the card should go in the core box, which is what you saw a moment moments ago and instead I would place every single card organized inside of this box which was perfect for cards and for just extra things like the odd bag or some extra tokens in here and organize everything including tons of space for extra packs of cards in here that don't even need to be housed but you can see if I go even further I've got the mini cards down below I've got extra sleeves for every single core hero because I was a little nuts and decided to actually make them all uh, individual based on the color that they are. But long story short, this actually worked as a storage solution for as long as I've had Nemesis, which is as long as it's been released into the wild. But now it's time for a change. So everything that was inside of that box regarding cards that were sleeved are now in here, except for about five or six characters that come from the stretch goal box. But don't worry about that. Those characters will have a space of their own in that other insert you're gonna see later on in the video. You can see seven of the characters here from the core box, as well as the one additional, all fit inside of this core insert. And I've even got the high quality Ultra Pro colored sleeves going on here. No issues with being able to pull them out and retrieve them. Lots of space. I'm using high quality sleeves across the board here. There's still wiggle room for these ones because these cards here that are standard size, I typically don't use the 100 microns uh, thickness in terms of the sleeves. I actually go with something a little bit, che a little bit cheaper uh, so I can get more of them, like 100 per pack. But if you wanted to get the, you know, the really heavy duty sleeves, they have room to be put into those. And the closest thing I have to those would be these. And you can see there's still wiggle room in them as well, but 
These ones right here, the mini cards, are all in the best quality sleeves I could get, and their housing's a little bit tighter, but still wiggle room inside of them to move around, which is great. So I can gain access to these anytime, plus they're all labeled, so I know exactly what I'm going after, and everything fits in the same box. And at this point, we now have everything inside that fits for this bottom tray. You can see the six main characters down here to choose from. All of the different aliens here, but not every single one of them. There's still a couple uh, that will go into a separate tray we'll take a look at in a second. One of the coolest things I like is the division of the rooms there in the bottom left, allowing you to have rooms one and two separated out. Uh, also, it's worth mentioning that you'll notice the bases for the characters down the very bottom do not have the colored bases on them. They they will not fit in their positions just based on spacing with the bases on so you have to take them off the good thing is these are not clip-ons they're made of like a rubber so they're really easy to take on and off and it won't be kind of any danger to your miniature to have them going on and off between plays the other thing I found out myself was after taking a look at my colored sleeves and then looking at the mechanic in the shot just two prior to this, these were yellow. And I've actually changed them out to be orange to match the orange base of the mechanic. So now color coding is bang on. Here's the next tray all filled out, just to give you an idea. Now, I haven't shown you the lettering on the bottom of each of these positions, but everything's in the spots they're supposed to be in. we got exploration tokens over here. We have the engine tokens here. We have the uh, actual skate pods and the starting marker down here. Uh, all the engine tokens are in here, one through three. Dice up here. These ones, and you can see underneath it, it'll tell you what they are. The only uh, one unfortunate thing for the adult, these are called intruders instead of intruders. That's the only uh, mess up I've seen so far on the spelling on the inside of the insert but what I've done here is I've got these coin cases and of course the game doesn't come with these and you do not need to put them on I just do it to kind of spice up the feeling of drawing the tokens from the bag I do this with Arkham Horror LCG as well the only thing is they take up a whole bunch more space and the insert is ready to handle but you'll see that in some of the spaces especially the blank and queen sp uh, spaces there's lots of extra room so if you go ahead and put coin cases on every single token you have you should be able to fit them in here here, regardless of what sections are supposed to be for which types of tokens you can go ahead but what I've done is I've only gone ahead and put cases on the ones that I need to set up for a game and the extra adult tokens I just leave here and I, I basically case them if I need them uh, but I haven't had to at this point and if I ever did I just slot them in somewhere else overall this one's actually really nice has enough space for everything and a little bit beyond what I expected Next one here, we have a covered storage area. This is going to be for things like ammo injury markers, noise markers, status markers, fire markers, just tons of markers, malfunction markers, intruder carcass tokens, and character corpse tokens. Let's go ahead and fill this one in. And just like that, we've got all the tokens inside of this container. Looks pretty awesome. We'll go ahead and slide the lid on. And that lid is going to ensure that nothing falls out of the container or moves between the compartments. Next up, we have another container here, UV print all around the outside. This one also has a covered lid. And inside it, we're going to put the remaining miniatures that didn't fit in the giant insert in the bottom. You'll see creepers will sit in here. We've got the larva and some eggs. And just one quick correction on the filling of this insert. It was supposed to be a five wound token, not five wound markers. These markers are all in one location. Here's a look at this one all filled out. We've got spaces for every single miniature and the tokens looking really good with the UV print as well. And this one does have a cover on top of it that will just slide over top, slot in at the very end of the row. And as long as the bottoms are underneath these lips on either side, this will slot in lock here and lock there, preventing anything from falling out or moving. The final tray here uh, labels itself on the very bottom for just doors. This little box also has space to place all the little stands inside of it, or you can actually slot them on each and every door so they're ready to go. So now with everything we need placed inside those inserts, let's begin to place them inside the core box. I've removed all of the original inserts. Let's slide it in and see how it looks. That really is a thing of beauty. I love how the organization is already starting to look. 
Now, one of the things I learned as I started to put these pieces back into the box is that my plan originally of having these coin capsule like tokens uh, sitting in here in all these different blank sections, which is where they belong. If they're not in coin capsules, you can easily place them in in stacks and get every single one of them in there. But if you're like me and you like to just add a little extra bling to your game, that's going to present problems with typical organizers that are not designed to, uh, you know, accommodate that kind of creativity. So the one reason I want to mention I'm taking taking these out is strictly around this. So first off, there is an indent right here and right here, very hard to see. There's little ridges. That's because the scanner that's in the game will literally fit completely flat right here. Now that doesn't work if you have coin capsules sitting in this blank space and these other ones here. So you don't get to store it like that. And I want to be able to plus not, not just that, but also these cardboard pieces that come in the core game literally sit perfectly designed on top of that stuff to keep things from moving around. Again, you could get away with putting coin capsules in here, but you may not get all of these boards, which is all the character boards, the intruder board, into this insert the way it was designed like this if I was to do that. But you can see this is literally perfect and keeps it 100% flush to the rest of the design. If coin capsules are sitting inside of here, that's gonna present all kinds of problems, so I'll figure that out later. Now you likely already noticed this in that last clip, but this little box for the doors fits perfectly right in here to sit on top of where the characters or heroes are. And that again makes this area flush and ensures that the characters or little miniatures don't go flying everywhere. So everything's been designed and obviously looks to be very smart in how it's keeping things in a way that could be stored vertically, which is awesome because that's how I prefer to store my games. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and grab this box here. So this box actually sits just like this and it's a perfect fit between the dividers which stick up and give a ridge for this box to rub up against it that basically stops it from moving anywhere and then you've got this glass divider right here which again keeps both of these trays in place especially when things are vertical again and then over here We've got this longer one. And if you'll notice, there's a ridge right here, like right to the right of my finger. And that's for this glass divider here. And that's where it stops. So this thing literally sits right up against the dividers, stops right here and you'll see, doesn't go anywhere. So design wise, really impressed with this. And also it's nice to see that for things like this, there are some, there is some space, I should say, right here to baggy some of this stuff up in a couple baggies and literally just drop them straight down in here. That would work 100%. If you don't have to deal with coin capsules like me, they're all gonna fit inside the insert as the insert intends. But it looks like I'll be able to go ahead and place those in there no problem. And then the game board and everything else is gonna go on top. It's worth mentioning that if all of your tokens are not in coin capsules, everything will fit in here no problem. You'll have space here as well for these. And of course, this stuff did not belong in the core box. So this insert does a fantastic job of getting everything that's in the core box and even having a little bit of breathing room on top of it uh, in an organized fashion, well beyond what I was doing before with all my cards outside of the insert. Uh, getting into certain piles of cards is gonna be way easier. Pulling out these trays and just being able to get right into it with the setup that's also a massive plus so i'm looking forward to seeing what the stretch goal box is going to allow for storage and just like that everything is back inside the box we can put the lid on top everything fits in there beautifully we're going to now move into the creation of the stretch goal box for aftermath and void seeders let's go ahead and open up this box and see what we have inside instructions of course will probably be the first thing yep and then we've got ourselves another package. I'm gonna rip all this open. We'll go through each of these one at a time. First one I'm gonna to put together here is the giant base here. You can see everything's all labeled out. I've got 15 parts and some of them even go off screen here. I've broken them all out. There's more beyond this. It looks like it goes up to about 23 to finish this off. So I'll need another eight pieces after this. 
I've got the next set of pieces to place into this insert to flush it out. It's gonna go all the way up to 23, including all the UV elements around the outside. And here's a look at the finished product. So everything has been locked in position. We still haven't filled everything in just yet. There's a bunch of slots here for dividers and things like that. But for now, I just wanna show you what I've got to this point. UV printing on the outside of the box, giving it a little bit of life, a little bit of excitement to match all the components inside. I really do like that glass-like look in the middle. It looks pretty awesome. Uh, enjoyed that as part of the core organizer and the stretch goal box gets the same treatment. Here's the next base for us to go ahead and put together. The one thing I'm gonna mention though is that the instructions for the stretch goal one definitely need some updates in terms of where the pieces are within each of these different uh, sheets. They're not exactly accurate, but because there's not as many as the core box assembly, I found it really easy to find the pieces I need just by the shape alone. There's not much duplication at all on them. So it's very quick to find them even when they're not necessarily showing on the exact same pages. So for instance, you might be looking to try and find 11 and 11 may actually not be on this sheet. It may be on a different sheet that's customized in a different way. So they definitely need to do some upgrades to their instructions around the stretch goals one. Uh, but I've gone ahead and grabbed all the pieces necessary to put this one together. These were two of the pieces from the prior shot that I had ready to assemble this one. Realized quite quickly when I tried to slot them in that they didn't match in terms of the number of slits on the side of them. So very easy to just go ahead and try the other two that were available and they work no problem. Again, I would definitely recommend E-Raptor to go back and revise this instruction page for the stretch goals one as it does not match nicely. But again, there's not that many pieces, so you will definitely be able to figure this out. Here are the next pieces required to put this base together, which will have your expiration tokens for aftermath and the turret status and expiration markers uh, housed within it. And it's this one right here. It's important to note both of these smaller ones, which will have a bunch of tokens in them, will definitely have these. You'll have to go ahead and take the uh, covering off the top and bottom, and then you'll be able to slide them in to lock these tokens into position and ensure they don't come out. The next task to putting together this insert is gonna be grabbing the dividers that go into each one of these different sections. If you wanna know what goes where, you're gonna go ahead and reference this sheet, which will literally tell you the letters for each of the individual sections as you go along from top to bottom here. The one thing to note though, is that the actual areas where it tells you to pull these dividers, for instance, A is the first one that should actually go in this first slot, but you may not actually have the same layout because again, as I mentioned earlier, the instructions make it seem like these dividers are all on one uh, page or two in terms of, I should say, punch board, but they're actually divided up amongst a number of different ones. So what you can do is look the top right hand corner of each of the dividers and you'll actually see the printed out wording of the divider you need simply go ahead and find that one so help is actually a a is right here it states health right there in tiny little letters so i can punch this one out right here and that'll go into the first slot i'll continue to do this until the whole thing is full one thing I will mention here is anytime that the instructions mention X as one of the dividers, it's simply just a divider that's completely blank and doesn't have any writing on it. And that completes the assembly of the giant core insert here. You can see all the dividers along the middle here. So help, action, five blank black dividers, private, alert, trait, event, another black uh, blank divider, panic, attack, wounds, and leaving off with a blank black divider there. You've also got some smaller dividers up here. These are easy to slot them in. There's no words on them, but there is words on the side to let you know what these things are. There was one incorrect spelling I'm noticing here. Should have been insanity, uh, but close enough. And uh, overall, it looks really good and it's going to help with organization of the cards big time. That's really one of the biggest pluses for setup. So that's gonna do it for the build assembly. Here's a look at the box. I'll be placing the new insert inside of. We've got the Aftermath and Void Seeders expansion manuals. Put those to the side. We've got the board here. And then of course, underneath a whole bunch of cardboard in one slot. We've also got the tiles here. And then underneath of that, we have a plastic divider, which we take that off and that will get us into all the contents inside the box. And here's a glimpse of the box without the actual cover on top of it, that clear cover. So now you can see there's a whole bunch of miniatures in here, a whole bunch of cards, some tokens. These are all gonna end up in that organizer we saw earlier. Now we'll go ahead and slot that new insert into the box instead of the original one. 
This insert looks really good as well. We've got all the miniatures in the center here. You'll see there's enough of a space here in this area that you can tell all the cardboard pieces for player boards and the intruder boards, things like that are gonna fit right on top of that to keep them down. And then of course, you've got the actual board which will sit on top of everything to keep all the miniatures in place and cards. All these cards are on angles, unlike the other insert, which is nice because it makes it even easier to grab them out. You got player decks and I've got them color coded again for each of the uh, individual characters I can be. One thing I noticed when going through this insert is the medic is actually not supposed to be in the base insert like I put it in. It's supposed to be in this insert as there's a space for the medic right here. So the medic is housed in here. There's also room for the uh, the cat, an astronaut, or as they like to call it, a catanaut in this space right down here. So you do have room for that. Next up, we're gonna fill this case. There's only two things going in here. And here's this case filled with all the tokens it's supposed to have. Again, it does have a cover for it. The last token case to fill in has layer exploration tokens, character insanity tokens, void cedars, one, two, three, four, and blanks. And just like that, we got both the cases completely full. The insert for the game, the original one, is completely empty at this point. Well, it's worth mentioning that first assumptions on a brand new insert are always correct. And I wasn't correct in terms of putting the room tiles and the sand timer in this area. There's actually a better spot for them. And I'm gonna show you that right now. When you flip this insert over to the opposite side, you're gonna see room tiles, boards, and hourglass. It's not actually talking about what's back here, like these ones actually are. It's actually talking about storing these three things here in the center, which I didn't actually see until I looked a little closer, but you have an hourglass here and this hourglass can sit perfectly. And I don't know if you can see the cutouts for the positioning of it right there, but it's actually cut out in the dividers. That the hourglass can lay across like this, which is pretty awesome. And now it makes a lot more sense in terms of the wording. You got your room tiles here, which are gonna sit right on top and again, be perfectly level with the dividers. And then of course, this area that I thought was for those two things are actually gonna be where you store your tokens, of course. So that's gonna actually eliminate that area from being a spot for other storage, but that's okay because that's what this, des this insert is designed to do. And then at this point, we'll flip this thing back around and you'll see that the rest of the player boards and the intruder board, or in this case, the void seater board is gonna sit like this. And all of these will go into the middle like so. and it'll sit perfectly flush. All that's left to do now is to just go ahead and grab the game board. We're gonna place it right on top like so. We've also got the two instruction booklets which will sit on top of this. Everything is flush, we drop the top onto the box and everything's organized inside. So my final thoughts on these after completing the assembly, putting everything back in, is that the setup and teardown time for this game now is going to drop 100%. Before I had to grab giant packs of cards, divvy them all up, figure out where everything was before I even had a chance to start playing. Now I'm gonna know exactly the cards that are in the right boxes, all labeled off to pull things that I need to get the game set up that much quicker. That's gonna be a huge advantage. Now what this insert doesn't do is it's not gonna take what you have in terms of terrain expansions or anything else that you like to do on the side in terms of blinging things out and getting those into the box. First off, sleeves. Most people are not gonna do what I do here. This is a little ridiculous, but I like to do it because I just like to add flavor and immersion and just even more excitement to a game that I already love. I don't do this for every game, but Nemesis is one of my top games ever. And then of course we've got uh, lots of terrain based expansions or these in this case are eggs and turrets and things like that that have come out. Uh, you, I've also got the uh, space cat box. So those could potentially sit in here. I'm probably gonna use this terrain box as the place to house all the minis for all the extra stuff and for some baggies and smaller things like this. Some of the stuff and tokens that come with the untold stories are all stored in here as well. So long story short, for me, it's not gonna reduce the number of boxes down. However, that's not saying that I couldn't come up with a couple interesting creative solutions with the inserts. Now you saw earlier that I was able to potentially have space to put in coin capsules and other things like that. I may be able to find a way to get some of this stuff into the box, but a lot of what's in here isn't necessary to play Nemesis. It's just additional stuff on the side. The terrain expansion would have been cool to get inside of these inserts, but I can understand based on how much and how thick those doors are and all the eggs and everything else, it's a little bit much to try and ask for an insert to accommodate all that stuff into the original boxes. So I'm okay with just holding on to this for those extra pieces. 
And that's gonna do it for the unboxing, the assembly, the look at the original storage that I had going on for Nemesis, at least for the base game and this stretch goal box, as well as a train box, and then how I'm getting everything into these two boxes with the new inserts. Uh, I'm gonna go over a couple pluses and I'm gonna go over a couple uh, negatives around this insert as well. So first off on the positive side of things, if you're looking for an organizer that looks really good and was made specifically for Nemesis, you're not gonna be able to beat these solutions. These are going to be the best of available currently. Uh, they look great. They obviously are going to help with setup and teardown times as you can literally pull each container out. They've got handles on the side. You can bring them straight to the box if you want to appreciate the UV print on the outside. Or you can say, forget it. I don't even need to look at the UV print. Leave it in the box. And you can also go with a non-UV print option as well if you'd rather not have that. For me, it adds that immersion level and I love Nemesis. So going to that level with it, I mean, if I'm putting coin capsules on token I'm probably going to go ahead and lean towards the UV print but again this is a special game for me it's one of my favorite games ever so because of that I'm going the extra mile with it this is not the norm with most games so with everything being labeled out in the inserts and having actual writing on them, really happy about that. That leads me to a con that there was a couple spelling mistakes as I went through that was kind of unfortunate to see. I was hoping that there would be a little bit of a quality check there on the actual wording. Uh, it doesn't happen very often, but I think I spotted about two or three spots where things were misspelled. Now on the positive side, the core insert, which is this one right here, instructions as they were printed of current day, they were great. I was able to follow everything no problem. And that's actually good because this was the toughest one to build. It was the largest one. This one I found to be a lot easier to build, but the instructions for it were completely different in terms of the layout of where the punch boards and the items would be in those punch boards. It almost looks like that it was an older instruction uh, guide for a previously prototyped version. Uh, whereas this final version, things were not in the positions that the instructions were telling you they're supposed to be in. So I think there was a disconnect there. It could be me. I didn't go to their site to download the electronic version, but I recommend if you want the most recent version of the instructions to not just go by the printed materials, check out the site for eRaptor, find the product, and then when they release that digital document, that is going to be the one you want to actually reference. The good news was that most of the pieces are very unique in this one, or they have writing on them. So once I was able to figure out the disconnect, it was very quick to figure out what other piece I should have grabbed instead. It wasn't something where I was spending hours trying to figure out where these pieces actually come from. There's only a handful of punch boards in that one. It was really easy to put together. And again, that's one of the things I love about these inserts is there's no glue. So you're just snapping these things together extremely fast and building them as quickly as you can find the pieces. Now that does lead me into a con and that con is going to be around the fact that some residue comes off of the UV print and will be left on your fingers as you're actually assembling this thing. That's usually because you're aggressively grabbing them and squeezing them into place as they snap into position. So obviously some of the uh, black residue that's on the UV printed sides of these inserts are going to rub off on your fingers. So you'll notice that residue, but it's not going to affect the components you're putting inside the box. It's not going to ruin them or cause any kind of damage it's just something to be aware of when you're building your hands will get a little bit dark the other thing that i really like to see was that everything when it's set back in the box in terms of the inserts and all the individual pieces they all lay flush so you can guarantee get the game board on top you can get the reference sheets the rule books the lid back on closed no lift going on in the box happy about all that they thought about the spacing requirements and that my friends is going to wrap up this feature product video specific to two uv inserts for nemesis I hope this gives you a good idea as to what you can expect to find inside the box and also not just that but how to build them and once everything's put inside of them what it looks like. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always keep on rolling solo.